Round 10, NRL action from the Colonial Stadium in Melbourne. It's the Melbourne Storm up against the Sydney Roosters. The Melbourne Storm will take to the field as per program. Marcus Bynes, jumper number five, playing his 100th first grade game. And Hill and Hawford, racking up a good relationship in the halves. The Sydney Roosters have two changes due to suspension. Brad Fittler is out. Jamie Russo makes his first grade debut. While on the bench, Michael Korkidis replaces Adrian Morley. It's the Sydney Roosters up against the Melbourne Storm. Stephen Clark is this afternoon's first grade referee. 166 first grade games. Plenty of experience for Stephen Clark. And the Roosters will get us underway. I'll defend the left-hand side of the screen. The Storm running right to left. And Orford, Rodney Howe over running it. And so had to take the ball himself. Takes it towards centre field. And here comes Rua. And he's 25 metres out, playing the ball. And now Robbie Kearns, his first hit up of the afternoon. Scott Logan, pressing for state of origin selection for the Maroons. Makes the tackle. They go a little bit wide through Kearney. Ricketson there to make the tackle. With Cross. Five short of the halfway line. Now it comes back to Orford with the kick on an early tackle. It's away from Flannery, the fullback. He goes back. Has Hegarty in support. Doesn't need him and takes the tackle of the Storm. Good chase. Yeah, good start for the Melbourne Storm. No dramas, no, no mistakes. Five tackles and a nice kick and a very, very good chase, as you alluded to, Mark. Here's Fitzgibbon. 25 out from his own line. First opportunity for the Roosters to touch the football this afternoon. Pongia. Straight and hard. Melbourne defence meet him in numbers. Logan. Solid tackle. Rodney Howe and Kearns. Front rowers on front rower. Nine short of the halfway line. Last tackle here for the Roosters. The kick comes from Green. No, it doesn't. Back to Flannery under pressure. Gets it away. It's not the best of kicks. And watching it go over the touchline is Paul Fatawira. And so the Storm will have reasonable field position. Well, it might not have been the best kick but it's not a bad result for the Roosters. They're expecting Green to kick the ball. Flannery did. It did go out. Their defensive line was pretty staggered, and they might have been in some trouble if the Fatarua had got the ball. Well, Mark Murray's done his homework. No Brad Fittler, who the major kicker is. Obviously, all the kicking will be done by Green, and you hold saw it, the Melbourne it. Storm. They moved straight up on the Green and put some pressure on him. He had to find Flannery, and obviously the kick wasn't a good one. That'll be a ploy that the Storm will use for sure. Here come the Storm. Hill. Knocked down by the Roosters, wasn't played at, so it shouldn't be a knock-on. Play on, and Minicello will pick it up and race away and score. He's over the 40. It wasn't played at deliberately, I don't think. He'll go to the video referee more than likely, but I reckon this will be a try. It's got to be deliberately played at, and here we go. Guys, you just check to see if that ball was played at by the Roosters, please. John Gosher, the video referee. I want to see it was played at. Giving it to Hill. Minicello comes in, no, that's a try. Flannery hits his hand. He was going to make the tackle. He wasn't going for a knockdown. I don't think he played at it. The Melbourne Storm crowd here think it's a knock-on. But I'm not sure whether they're aware of the change of rule, but it has to be played at. Flannery makes the tackle here. I don't think he's played that football. I think the referee will give the benefit of the doubt to the Roosters. The other question I have is, is Minicello in an offside position when it's hit? But he wasn't asked to look at that. Cross is offside, but where's Minicello? He wasn't asked at that, but hopefully Ghosh is looking at that with these things here. There's Minicello. Line His ball. line ball, benefit of the doubt. Here's the decision, try! Here's Craig Fitzgibbon from right in front. He missed with his first attempt. No troubles with that one. And so against the run of play, the Roosters have hit the lead six points to nil. It came from the scrum win, which shouldn't have been a scrum because the Storm should have found touch from the penalty kick. Here's Rodney Howe having a breather. Ben Rorty on for the Storm. There's an ordinary pass thrown there by a man that should really know better in Quentin Pong out. And now Kearns has come up with it. Rorty, 32 metres out. I think the Storm fancy the left-hand side of their chances on the left-hand side of the field. Pongia yeah. shouldn't be on the field. Well, I think the Storm will come left most of the time. I think they want to put Aaron Newell up against Ryan Cross. 
and uh, most of their attack has been headed this way. Sorry, Russell, I just saw yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, good. Just saw Quentin Pong out, yeah. quite streaming from a cut eye. We'll be lucky to be able to have that cleaned up. It's Brian Fletcher penalised there. There it is, that cut. He's cleaned it up, but they'll take him off anyway. Struck it pretty well. Straight between the posts. The Roosters... Lead is cut to four. Sydney six, Melbourne two. We're halfway through the first half. Well, it's been a good old-fashioned grinding game of football. Rorty, centre field. Turns back up the middle of the ruck, offloads back to Rorty. He finds the Via who's on the field. Nine metres out from the line. Kearney. He's only two metres out. They only trail by four, the Melbourne Storm. Orford. Now Scott Hill. Cut out ball. Quick hands. Perinara. Bell. Must score in the corner. Fadawir is over. The Melbourne Storm have levelled it up at Colonial Stadium. It's 6 all with a kick to come. Well, that was great work there by the Melbourne Storm. That try was set up the six previous rucks where the Storm were defending... They had the Roosters stuck on that sideline. The Roosters couldn't go anywhere. It was a cardinal sin. You've got to try and work the ball in field. You've got nowhere else to go once you're on the sideline. And they hemmed them in there. They forced a mistake on the fifth tackle. Just tremendous work by the Storm. You can see their intensity has been lifted by that set of six. And then they use the football down the right-hand side. A great cutout ball, second-man play by Hill. Stephen Bell on to Fatawira. Good try for the Storm. Tough kick for Orford from touch. Not the best. And he's missed that one to the left, and so the scores are level. At Colonial Stadium, 6 all. the Storm and the Roosters. Here's Rorty. He's tackled 12 metres out. Can the Storm score before half-time? Break the deadlock. How back to Orford. Scott Hill... Turns the ball back inside. They keep it alive. Orford goes for the line. He's over try. They have scored before half time. They have broken the deadlock and they're four in front. Well, they needed to the storm. They were starting to build pressure. They've had the majority of possession in the latter half of this half. Just great work by the Storm. They work it to the middle of the field. They've got each options either side of the park. How? They put on a run around. We don't see many of it in today's game, but it is effective. They just keep the ball alive. And Matty Orford, he just continues to impress in this Storm outfit. Scores a solid try. Chance for him to convert his own try. Fifth try of the season. And Matty Orford he really is making an impact here in Melbourne. He finds his feet. Scott Hill has moved to 5'8". He's helping both players, I think, too. Great combination, the two. Straight over the black dot. And once again, a try inside the final five before half-time. They were 6-0 down the storm. They now lead by 12 points to 6. We well, touched on the Orford-Hill combination. Orford, at the start of the year, he had big boots to fill in Brett Kamali and his scrum base partner was to Cecil Lavia who was a rookie himself he, he won rookie of the year last year and Orford have only played about 10 first grade games so between them there wasn't much experience and since Hill has moved to 5'8 he's helped guide the team around the park he's taken the pressure off Orford a little bit and it gets better and better each week Bell plays it Inside the final two minutes of the first half. Perinara brings the ball forward for the Melbourne Storm. Here's Orford. Once again, a pass, putting a teammate under pressure. And how well has Bowden done? And Ryan Cross has hurt himself in back play. His leg hit the head of Bowden there. And he's in trouble with an ankle injury. Orford, or maybe his leg, he could be in serious trouble. He's waving. Now the ball is kept in play by Marcus Boy. And what a try! He should be at Old Trafford playing for Manchester United. How did he do it? We'll go to the video replay. 
just check a, check a couple of things for me, guys. I want to check the onside and the grounding, please. Thank you. I think Ryan Cross has broken his leg in back play, and the Melbourne Storm have scored at the other end. Well, it's a big call. A broken leg, Mark, but I was watching the football, and if this is a try, this is a fantastic effort by Marcus By Persistence. Most players would have pulled up, thinking the ball was going out over the sideline. Minoncello thought it was going over. By kicks it through. The only doubt I've got is if he's onside or not. He's onside. That's a try. Fantastic work by Marcus By in his 100th first grade game. And persistence with Marcus By. Tremendous effort by the Melbourne Storm. What a rugby league try. 16-6, two tries in the five minutes before half time as Ryan Cross comes from the field. Well, we watch this magnificent effort from By again. How did he stay in the field of play? He's done a David Beckham at Manchester United. Come back in, and then off the 10 metre platform, he's nailed a 9.4. Logan hasn't been back since he popped the head knock early. Orford from touch has missed it to the left. And that is just about half time. We won't get a restart. And I don't mean to be alarmist about Ryan Cross, but he was in agony. He wasn't placed on the stretcher, but he was on the medicab. And they were holding his leg. He did limp, hobble to the medicab. Hop. But he won't be back, I'm sure, for this game. And Logan is a bit dusty on the touchline. Half time at Colonial Stadium. This game has turned around in five minutes. It's the Melbourne Storm 16, the Sydney Roosters 6. About to get the second half underway. The Roosters, can they come back? This will test their medal this afternoon, trailing by 10. The news for Melbourne Storm fans is that Robbie Kearns is just coming out of the tunnel now to head to the bench. So they've got their four. Over the 30 metre line come the Roosters from the restart. Dallas Hood will play it. Ten short of halfway. The Roosters first set after the break. Wing. Now Green off a hand of the Storm. Play on. Should be six to go. Picked up there by Minicello. Knock on by Anthony Minicello. The second one. When he went to grab it, he come off his hand. Not the, not the charge down. Another one from Anthony Minicello. Bit of bad luck there for the Roosters. The charge down's not a knock on. But Minicello must have just got a fingertip there. And so the Storm will come up with the loosened feed. Scotty Hill putting pressure on the kicker. Let's see here. As it was close. Good field position here for Melbourne. Marcus by. Runs at Flannery. Bounces away from him. Luckily enough, Jamie Russo was there to make the tackle. Rodney Howe, solid run. Great fits given with the tackle. Michael Crocker in there also. Ben Rorty. Edge his way towards the 30 metre line. He's tackled about five metres short. Orford accelerates. Fletcher Crocker with the tackle for the Roosters. Right in centre field. They go left. Now it comes from Hill. Spinning, weaving. There's nowhere to go. Forced back in the tackle. About five metres. Swain from acting half. They go left last. They've got numbers here. The pass from Bowden now comes to Swain. He'll get over. Can he get the ball down? No. Great oh, defence, Minicello. And how did Brian Fletcher get there? That was sensational work by Minicello. Penalty the against the away. Melbourne silly. Storm. Silly Richard. Swain threw it away. It was just great work. The Storm, I thought they were going over to score. Fletcher comes in to give a hand. And that's why he's such a quality player, Fletcher. He never gave up. Brought he now, running across field. Nine metres out. Last tackle, slow play the ball. Orford, cut out ball. It goes to Bell. Now to Fatawira. Can he get two? No. Shannon Hegarty has come up with a very good tackle. Six tackle changeover. 
super piece of work by Matty Singh and Hegarty there. That was fantastic. You would have sworn that he was a metre out the line. There was just momentum was going to take him over the try line line. But, gee, they, they stuck to their guns, held him up. And I thought it was only a matter of time before the Roosters considered another one. Here's a chance now for the Roosters. Minicello into open space. Full back to beat on the halfway line. Through Geyer in support, Rickardson. Will he have the pace? Yes, he will. And the Roosters have hit back with a try to Luke Rickardson. But put it down to a great run by Minicello. It's 16-10 with a kick to come. Well, it was great work there by Minicello. But it was the storm defensive line. He tried to put pressure on. And I'm sure Marcus Byers just come off his wing. Tried to put pressure on the Roosters player. It was someone else's man. He's just come in. He hasn't read it particularly well. The ball has gone past him. He can't give this man any space. He's too quick. And he just finds Rickardson backing up. It was just poorly read by Marcus By. He didn't have to come in. Here's the kick. He has kicked it. It's now four points the difference. It's given has narrowed the gap. And it's the Storm leading the Roosters by 16 points to 12. Familiar territory for the Roosters at the start of this second half. This is where the Storm really need to pick up their act. They had no success early in this second half. Mentally, they've probably dropped off a little bit. But they've got to win this arm wrestle in the second half if they're, if they're to win this game. The Roosters, on the other hand, are picking it up. They'll get a lot of confidence out of the points that they've just scored. And they're starting to look dangerous. Solid tackle there on Singh, and he's going at 100 miles an hour. And ran into a brick wall. Logan back on the field, and he's hit solidly straight up. Now they keep it alive. Good work, the Roosters. Crocker, great hands. Rickardson doesn't have the pace. Gives it a minute. Cello. He does. Full back to beat inside. Here's a try, and what a try it is to the Roosters. Paul Green levels it up, and with a kick to come, the Roosters could hit the lead. Well, that's what we spoke about. The storm to me switched off they're making some ordinary season decisions in defense they're coming in when they don't have to they afford to slide and hang back the second phase play of the roosters is starting to come into their own that's why the storm was so successful in the second half when you come in off your line you've got to make the tackle and when the ball gets on the outside to this guy here minicello he's just too quick green supporting and what a turnaround in this game. Straight between the posts, not a problem. They're in front, the Roosters. Well, 16-6 was never going to be enough for the Melbourne Storm. They had to score first in the second half if they were to go on and win this game. But the Roosters are a quality side. Now wing and acting half to Green. Go out to that right again. And Rickardson is now the ball's dropped on the ground. Crocker picks it up, accelerates through. Mule grabs him by the jumper, brings him to ground. Last tackle 22 meters out, center field. Wing from Acne Half. They've got the numbers in a score again. Over in the corner goes Minicello. No, he's grabbed and goes again. Try. He grabbed him by the jumper. Guy, he's going to go to the video referee. I want to check to see if he was tackled short of the line and then make a second movement, please. That's what we're checking there. Well, this will be touch and go. It will be touch and go, but it was great work by Craig Wing. He's moved out to 5'8", but he has been playing as a dummy half in the recent weeks. You see here, Matty Guyer, he's got his arm on him. The elbow touches. He comes off. That's a try. Yeah, it was his momentum that took him across the line as well, the new rule states anyway, even if he had a hand there, I think that's momentum, but he didn't have a hand on him as soon as he let him go. In my opinion, that's play on, that well, should be a try. As we look at this, I don't think he was ever in control of the tackle, that's what we've got to look at. There's no way, he's slipping off the tackle here, his arms are now free, that's got to be a try. I think the referee will award that, but you've got to say, Laurie, you fit on the head, Craig Wink read it, he showed the vision, went down that short side, and had enough pace to get there, it was a fantastic effort. There's a try, second of the afternoon to Anthony Minicello. This will make it eight to difference. And this will be a huge blow to the storm behind the goal line. I'm not sure about this one. I'll back him in. I'll tell you in a minute. 
I reckon he'll miss it. Oh. Yeah, just to the left. Got it again. How am I going? Going ordinary on the tipping stakes. Ryan Cross earlier. Now, Nathan's given missing that kick. But the Roosters, they've got to continue to play this type of football. Now Fletcher. Dummies goes himself. Defense was coming up quickly. So he held on to the ball. Pongia has lost it. Coming back on in the, inside, in the middle of the ruck. Now they have quick hands. Mule gets away from Minicello. Crocker comes up with a very good tackle. Bye. Marcus Bye across field. He's already got one in game 100. Can he get two? They go left. Orford cuts out Kearney to Mule. He's nine metres out. Slow play the ball. A bit hurt there, Aaron Mule. Now, Robbie Kearns, the captain up the middle, is only a metre out from the line. Crocker's made some good tackles in the last ten minutes. Orford, Hill, ball to Rua. He should score. Is he over? Yes. Did he get it down? The referee says we'll go upstairs. Yes. Yeah, grounding. I have an opinion, which I, th I, I, I'm of the opinion that he got the ball down. Just check it for me, please. Well, how important is this ruling now from John Gosha as Luke Rickardson speaks to the referee? There we go. He's short there. And does he, that's a try. I don't think there's any doubt about that, Mark. I think the medium has certainly carried him over. If you take another look at this, there's been no extension of the arms. He's just been driven over by the momentum that's been behind him, plus the three tacklers on his back. I think we'll see this one awarded. There it is. The Melbourne Storm have hit back. Little trouble from next to the post for Matt Orford. We're level once again at Colonial Stadium. Get comfortable. Because we're going to storm home, maybe, with the Melbourne Storm. 22 all. Have they got the ascendancy? Here they go through Russo. Over the 20-metre line. What about the field goal here, Laurie? They might. Three to go. Where's Paul Green? It goes to him. Perinara comes through. It's not a bad kick. It's there. He's kicked it. Paul Green has kicked the field goal for the Sydney Roosters. And they're in front by a point. And that turnover has proved costly. Do they have time, the Storm, with two minutes and 50 seconds of play remaining to get down the other end of the field? Here goes Hill for the kick for touch to try and get the loosened feed. Will it find the touch line? No, Flannery just gets there. Great thinking by Scott Hill. Poor, just the execution. It didn't go out. We've seen a couple of weeks ago Brett Finch against the Newcastle Knights trying the same thing. Unfortunately, that day it went out in the full... But they're still going to have one more set at them, or a couple of tackles at least. Korkidis, let's see if the Roosters don't make a mistake. They could have more. 50 seconds to go, a point the difference. Rickardson, the experienced players, getting in there now. Fletcher will be the next hit up. He won't look to offload, will he? Yes, he does. They go wide, Logan. Arms free, he won't pass it. Hit by Rorty over the top. Last tackle. Will they look for touch here? Wing, they go to the blind side. Green towards the end goal. It's off a foot of the storm. It has gone out. So it's kicked out, so it's a handover. Wasn't played at, so six tackle changeover. 20 seconds to go. They've got 70 metres to get to the 20 metre line for a shot at field goal. Rodney Howe, I'm not sure they've got the legs, the Melbourne storm. The Roosters slowing play down. Swain at acting half. Orford, they go wide, Scott Hill, Aaron Mule, two seconds, last tackle of the game. They've got to try and score the try and win it. Kearney now, long ball, Bell hit by Singh solidly, flicked out the back to Bowden, back to Geyer. They keep alive, Orford, a long ball on the outside, Mule. He gets into open space, inside it's gone forward and the Roosters have dived on it and there is a courageous win from the Sydney Roosters.
They trailed 16-6 at half time. And without Brad Fittler, without Adrian Morley, with Ryan Cross with a suspected broken leg, and Scott Logan injured in the first half, the Roosters have scored a sensational win. 23-22 over the Melbourne Storm. Well, that has been a great performance by the Roosters here this afternoon. Not many people would have given them a chance against the Storm. Brad Fittler being out. They are one of the premiership favourites in this competition. And they have shown today that they can win without their skipper. They're a quality team. And it's games like this that build your season. And they will get tremendous confidence out of this performance here today, this Roosters side. They are in this competition right up to their necks.